Whoa. Why you don't get it? Because you ain't got it. You better get it. And so you got to get it here before you get it out here. Yeah, that's true. Come so we said it that way so that you can get it. I love it. Amen. <laughs> Read the next point. There are no poor people, only people who do not know their identity, rights, and benefits in God. Uh-oh. That just blew me away. There are no poor people. Only people who don't know their identity. Only individuals that don't know their rights in God. Only individuals that don't know, I am God. That's why we tell people there's no poor people here. Then who's here, Bishop? Only conscious people. I'm conscious. You can get me out of consciousness for anything. I live in consciousness, stay in consciousness, love consciousness, happy in consciousness. I'm so glad I'm conscious. Yes. Because you know what? I was the walking unconscious. I was unconscious of who I was, who I am, and who I could be. And once I became conscious, I started thinking. And once I started thinking, I discovered new enemies. Let me tell you something. You don't know the size of your anointing until you can measure the size of your enemies. <clears throat> you guys, can I say something? When you said um, to think, what I do, how I think is I sow a seed and I give it to the prophets because I let the prophet, what the mind of God says, for me. And whatever that is for me, then I go on and say, okay, I can build off this. Then I start thinking about what the word of God said in my life today. What did the master prophet say in my life today? Because if it wasn't for the master prophet, we wouldn't have thought, to have the thought to go to holy ground and to get a property up there. We wouldn't have thought to do that. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for the thought of the master prophet coming into my life, I wouldn't even been able to think of what to do. I wouldn't have thought to do that. And the Lord had also made a promise and a covenant that those that would step into that, that they would be millionaires. Mm. Now the test is believing the promise. Believing the law of the prophet. Oh, believing the word of the prophet. It's crazy. Touch your name and say, can you believe the word of the prophet? Can, can you believe, believe the word of the prophet? Reverend, read what I am equals. I am equals the presence of God within. I dare you to say that again. I am equals the presence of God within. Every time you say I am, you're announcing the presence of God within. You see, that's why I can't go back to, to traditional church. Mm -hmm. Here is a problem. Yes. I that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem. Somebody asked me the other day, says, would you come to my church to preach? I said, I'm not sure what I would preach. I may get up in a pulpit and say, I am equals the presence of God within. What did you say I am to today? Because not everybody is not ready to become conscious. Because when you become conscious, that means you're ready to take on responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility when you start to use the word I am. And that's why we don't say death filled words like tickle to death, scare to death, frighten to death. We say life filled words because the Bible says, I set before you life and death. Choose life. That's why you will never hear us saying, oh, I got so tickled to death. We just say, cancel, cancel. Cancel that. The subconscious can't take a joke. Because the subconscious does not take a joke, and the subconscious will try to make sure you get tickled to death. Well, it's just a form of speech, exactly. And consciousness will try to bring that form into manifestation. It's, listen, it's a form of speech, right? And the word, speech, right. was made flesh, form. That's, right. That's why I can't get around people sometimes. They say, I'm taking it too far. Yeah, you're taking it too far. It's like, yeah, I can't even talk with nobody. Right, because see, you can't see, see, because see, when you start becoming conscious, your language change. You get rid of fear-filled words. You know, I was so frightened. Can't do that. I got so scared. 
Oh, I, I, something else happened. That 9-11, they just tried to pound that on every newspaper, all on TV. I could not look, I, trying to get, I'm looking at people crying in the mall and like, what is going on? Trying to get me mesmerized by 9-11 again. That was crazy. I had to find somewhere else to put my mind on 9-11. Well, that's why you got to watch what rents space in your head. I tried to get Reverend Ike to go see, because I thought it was a good movie. I tried to get him to go see Titanic. I says, Rev, come and go see Titanic. He says, no. <laughs> I said, like, come on, Rev, you'll enjoy it. The ship, the lifestyle. I said, why won't you go see Titanic? He says, I love cruises too much. Mm, teach. He says, I don't need that in my consciousness. So he, would, so he wouldn't go see Titanic? No, because he believes that if it was in his consciousness, it would live out in his experience. Mm. Mm. See, that's an evolved master. Because yeah. mm. he... <laughs> He realized what he, he, he loves consciousness so much that he couldn't, he couldn't fill his mind because he realized that for him, to, for him to experience that in his mind, he know the work of treatment he has to do to get it out of his mind. That's a lot of treatment. Jesus, yes. See, this is called mind science, the science of mind. Everything's a science. You know, science is a dirty word in the black community. Most black people are afraid to wear science in church. You know, we've been taught not to use science in church. But God is omniscience. Omniscience. Break it down. All science. If it's not scientific, it's not godly. But you've got to understand, church is really for the poor. Uh-oh, you've got to explain that. It is. Church is for... Church is for the poor? Yeah, it's for the poor and the unlearned. Mm. Why do you think they have mass for masses? It's not a thinking kind of religion. Now, I'm not talking about spirituality. I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about Western Christianity. Christianity was good for the slave in America. It helped with capitalism. Number one, it taught you to love your master. Now, how could you be freed from what enslaves you if you love it? So you have to think about this. So... So, Master Prophet, what are you saying then? Are you saying, no, just stay with me. Don't, don't tune me out. Just listen to what I'm saying. When you start to become a thinking Christian, your philosophy and ministry change. You'll throw out 90% of the crap that's been fed you. And you'll start becoming this book instead of reading the stories of this book. See, that's why they got upset with Jesus. He closed the book <laughs> and says, this day have the scriptures been fulfilled. They pushed him to the brow of the cliff. They wanted to throw him down. Why? Because he became what he read. That's why they had a problem with Nat Turner. Nat Turner started becoming what he read. Nat Turner started reading the book. So that's why you don't hear too much about Nat Turner, you know, because they don't want too many Nat Turners turning out. Nat Turner started reading and started getting an understanding, not of Christianity, he got an understanding of the kingdom. He said the kingdom of God had come. He realized that he was not living to spend eternity in heaven but he was here on the planet to bring the kingdom of God to earth. So he realized that he was, the, and Nat Turner was a preacher. He realized that he had to rid the earth of the evil. He picked up a gun. <laughs> he picked up a gun and he ended up becoming preacher. He went from preacher Nat Turner to general Nat Turner. And he started killing individual